<clears throat> Welcome back into our class BI 210, How to Study the Bible. Today is day 17 as we continue to go through the practical principle of reading through the text. We're reading through 1 John all the way from chapter 1 to the end of chapter 5. And the purpose of this is that we gain a greater mastery over the subject matter that's found in each and every single book. And this month, we're going through the first John chapter, the first, cha first epistle of John. So let's go back into our reading and go back and you're going to notice that your comprehension is increasing. It's increasing more and more and more. Let's go back. What was from the beginning and what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested and we have seen and testified and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we have proclaimed to you also that you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship was with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. These things we write, so that our joy may be made, what? Complete. This is the message that we have heard from, the, from him and announced to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light and he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the, prop the prop propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. By this we know what? We know that we have come to know him. Why? If we keep his commandments, and the one who says that I have come to know him, and does not keep his commandments, he is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, in, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know what? We know that we are in him. Now the one who says he abides in him also ought, him also ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Beloved, I am not writing a new commandment to you, no, but an old commandment which you have heard, which you have had from the beginning, and the old commandment is what? It is the word, the word which you have heard. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him, and you in, and in you. Why? Because the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Now, the one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother, he is in the darkness until now. Now, the one who confesses his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But the one who hates his brother is in the darkness, and he walks in darkness, right? and walks in darkness, and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Now I'm writing to you, little children. Why? Because your sins have been forgiven you for His name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers. Why? Because you know Him who has been from the beginning. And I am writing to you, young men. Why? Because you have overcome the evil one. I have written to you, children, why? Because you know the Father. I have written to you, fathers, why? Because you know him who has been from the beginning. And I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. 
If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not. It is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride, the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but it is from where? From the world. And the world is passing away and also is lust, but the one who does the will of God, what? He lives forever. Now, children, it is the last hour, and just as you heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many, many Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. Now, they went out from us, but they were really not of us. For if they had, they, for if they had been of us, they had been of us, they would have remained with us, but they went out so that it would be shown that they are all not of us. But you have an anointing, an anointing from the Holy One, and you all know. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth. No, but because you do know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar? Who? But the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ. That's the liar. This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. Now, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. The one who does not have the Father, the one who confesses the Son, has the Father also. Notice the constant contrast back and forth. And as for you, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. And if you heard, and if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and the Father. That is the promise. What promise? Which he himself has made to us what? Eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you. Hmm? As for you, the anointing which you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and is true, and it is not a lie, and just as it, is, just as it has taught you, you abide in him. Now, little children, abide in him. Why? So that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. And if you know that he is righteous, and you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. See, see how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we would be called children of God. And such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not appeared yet as, as we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him. We will see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. Now, everyone who practices sin also practices what? Practices lawlessness and sin is what? Sin is lawlessness. And you know that he appeared in order to take away sins and in him there is no sin. Now, no one who abides in him or knows him, look at this, no one, hmm, look at this, who abides in him sins. And no one who sins has seen him or knows him. I mean, we need to be very clear about what God is saying to us. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of what? Is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning, and the Son of God appeared for this very purpose. What purpose? To destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God practices sin, because his seed abides in him. He cannot sin, because he is born of God. By this the children of God, and he says, by this the children of God and the children of the devil, now notice the contracts here, by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, hmm, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the, who was, who was of the evil one and slew his brother. He killed him. 
And uh, for what reason did he slay him? For what reason did he kill him? Because his deeds were evil, that is Cain, and his brothers, Abel, his deeds were righteous. Do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you. Don't be surprised by this. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. He who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with the word or with a tongue. But in deed and in truth, we will know by this that we are the truth and we'll assure our heart before him. In whatever our heart condemns us, for God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive of him because his commandments and, and because he because we, we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. This is the commandment that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Now the one who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. We know by this that he who abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Beloved, do not, please, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Why? Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is from where? Is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard that is coming, and it is now already here in the world. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because great is he who is in the world and he who is in you. Then great is he who is in the world, right? Because great is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Now they are from the world, therefore they speak as from where? From the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God, and he who knows God listens to us, and he who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for the love of the, for the love is from God, and everyone who lo who loves is from God and knows God. Now the one who does not love, does not love, does not know God, for God is love. By this the love of God was manifested, and in us, he says, manifest in us, so that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time, and if we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Now, whoever, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God abides in him and he in God. We have come to know that we have believed the love of which God has for us, and God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this, the love, by this love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of the judgment because he is so also we are in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he loved us first. He first loved us. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother? He is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. 
whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and whoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. By this we know what? We know that we love the children of God, that when we love God and observe his commandments, for this is the love of God that we do what? We keep his commandments. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, and this is the one who came by water and blood, and Jesus Christ, not the water only, but with the water and with the blood. It is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. And for there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And the three are in agreement. So if we receive, look at this, so if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater, for the testimony of God is this, that he is testified concerning his Son. Now the one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. And the one who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God, that God has given concerning his Son. And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has the life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that we may know that we have eternal life. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask and God will for him give life to those who commit a sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should make requests for this. All unrighteousness is sin and there is a sin leading to death. We know that no one who is born of God sins, but he who, has, who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. <coughs> Excuse me. We know that we are of God, and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. And this is the true and, ex and, ex and eternal life. Little children, guard yourselves from idol. This is today, day 17 in reading the Word of God.